Anybody okay. else? I think this is a great chance for any kind of personalization. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of medical devices, medical parts. When you say medical devices, what are you talking about? Like, uh, like surgical know. tools? Maybe also about, I, first I thought about, for example, I don't know the exact word, but things being put in your ear. Implants. implants. Like cochlear also, implants? Also implants, but also from electronical devices, which has to be personalized to your own body. Got it. You mean prosthetics? Also. Yeah, prostheses are a huge one. I think prostheses, so I mentioned in my other presentation that I won the Lemelson Prize. One of the other winners that year, his name was David Senge, he won for developing a 3D scanning and sensor technology and combining it with a 3D printer that allowed them to create a prosthesis for a, a specific person that fit them perfectly, but not only fit them perfectly, was the most ergonomic ever, because I mean, all of us thankfully have all of our legs and we're blessed, but there's people that don't. When they wear a prosthetic, there's pressure points and they have pain in specific areas because the prosthetic puts a lot of pain on that specific point and it swells up throughout the day. And what he did is he came up with a method that allowed them to develop a prosthetic that put the pressure everywhere that wasn't a pressure point. So they were able to specifically engineer the prosthesis for that person's pressure points, where their nerves were, to avoid the nerves, so that there wasn't that additional pain. So it can have a huge impact on the quality of life of somebody that's missing a leg or an arm or whatever it is. I'm personally really interested in robotic prostheses. So as soon as we can combine those two things, like, right, like what if you're not just printing them something like a kind of a stump, like what most things are. There's another professor from MIT, his name's Hugh Herrick, he spun out a company, and they have uh, completely robotic legs. What if you can combine those two things together? You just have like a bionic, perfectly ergonomic, doesn't hurt at all robot leg. Just so awesome. That exists, bionic. Is the name of the company Bionics? That, that's exactly what they do. Bio oh yeah, it is Bionics, because I always call it Bionix. Because <laughs> that's how they spell it, it's like B-I-O-N-Y-X or something like that. Yeah, I met their CEO a couple months ago. Yeah, but I, I, I remember, I sat in one of Hugh's lectures like four years ago when I was at school, and you wouldn't know, this guy's walking around wearing pants and just like pacing around the classroom, walking up and down the stairs in the middle of the lecture room, and then he like picks up his leg and puts it up there and it's a robot leg. I was just like, what? And he said that when he lost his legs in a, I think it was a rock climbing accident, he made himself taller when he got the new legs. Like two inches taller and just every day he could change how tall he is. <laughs> not, that, not that I advocate not having legs or anything like that. It uh, must be tough. But at the same time, there's huge advancements in technology. And here's another point too, is what if you can start reducing the weight of that leg so that the battery goes longer? What if you can walk for a couple more hours as a result of that, that weight reduction? Or strength, uh, the power reduction, power requirement reduction. There's so much that you can do when you start combining these concepts that we talked about, about design integration, consolidation, customization. And that's the beauty of 3D printing is, you don't have to do this in a, in a factory in one location. You, as soon as you've come up with the solution, if you have these machines all over the world, you have factories all over the world that can produce them on demand for whoever it is that needs it, as long as they have access to it. That's what's going to be so amazing. I mean, we're not seeing it today. We're kind of like in the middle of it today. But 20 years from now, I think we're going to be so amazed with what the world has become because of the generation of designers who are redesigning the world today. It's going to take us a while to see that impact in a very profound way. A lot of it has to do with regulation in medical or in avionics or in automotive. Like you can't just change the way something is manufactured without getting governments to approve it. But once that happens, we're not going to go back. Once you've reduced the weight of a plane by 10%, 20%, they're not going to go back to the old technique because you've fundamentally disrupted the economics of that industry or that technology. And with that, I want to thank you guys all for the comments, the questions, everything for being here. Bravo to all of you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I want to open up any more questions. And if not, it's just the end of it.